okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, quieten down, quieten down. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> camera's moved, oh my god. Okay, today I'm driving the GT4 RS, which really is peak modern Porsche experience at the moment. This car is something completely different. And to me, this is Porsche saying, let's just do whatever it takes to make this car as good as we possibly can to say goodbye to this generation of the Cayman Boxster. And what I'm talking about is the 981, 982, which are basically the same car. But before I get to talking, let's just enjoy some of the astonishing noises this thing makes. loud in here this is what Porsche was trying to do with the engine just here and with all the intake noises they have made this not just a little bit louder than any other Porsche I've ever driven it's like two or three times louder than say a GT3 and it's an astonishing place to be in fact it's almost too loud like just cruising at 70 miles an hour it's quite a drone in here but I guess that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be a race car on the street. And this is what it can do. Oh. It is an immersive experience. There's so much volume in this cabin from that screaming engine. It actually hurts your ears. It is that loud. And I've got the suspension in comfort mode and I feel every stone, every imperfection on the road. This is much more sports car than any other Porsche I've ever driven. Foot off the accelerator at 70 miles an hour, it is loud in here. But as soon as I put my foot down, this car will do up to 9,000 RPM and it will just absolutely surround you with sound. It's like being at a Twisted Sister concert. And of course there's been special Caymans before. Back in 2008 there was the Cayman S Sport which was nothing special at all so we won't talk about that. 2012 they released the Cayman R which had a whopping 10 horsepower over the S. And of course, 2015, a car which I'd previously reviewed on this channel, which was also owned by the owner of this car. Yes, the 2015 GT4 was a bit of a sensation at the time. Finally, Porsche unleashing 911 power into the balanced Cayman mid-engine body. You might also notice that the 2015 GT4 looks pretty much exactly like the 2023 GT4 eight years later. And we'll talk a bit about that shortly. Of course, there were still complaints about the GT4. We all bitched about it being a little too quiet in the cabin and the gears being a little too long. So Porsche said, oh, screw you guys, and made the GT4 RS so loud it makes your ears bleed and... Not so in this car. The gearing is perhaps a little low, in fact. Like, in seventh gear, at 70 miles an hour, I'm doing 3,000 RPM, which is quite high. But of course, I've still got 6,000 RPM to go. You do the math on that. And of course, this engine just builds power. It's reasonably powerful down low, but as you start getting over four, 5,000 RPM, it really starts hitting its pace. Okay, let's take a break from me shouting over that engine and take a closer look at this particular car. The standout option has to be the paint to sample color, $12,830 in tasteful British racing green. 
totally worth it when you see just how this car stands out even amongst other Porsches. This color might even match my friend Steven's fancy watch. I mean, it's almost as nice as Mumba Green. The other big ticket item is the YSAC package at $13,250. What does that get us? Well, over here, a bit of exposed carbon fiber, and over here, exposed carbon fiber, and here, exposed carbon fiber, and down here, exposed carbon fiber, and finally over here, guess what? <laughs> if you guessed exposed carbon fiber, then five points to you. Anyway, back to that ludicrous dining table mounted on the back. It totally blocks any hope you might have of seeing anything out the rear window, and normally I'm not a big fan of these big wings, but it just suits the personality of this machine of excess. Oh, and of course it provides downforce, blah, blah, blah. But really, it just looks mean. Oh, and there's one at the front as well, which gives it the ground clearance of a wombat. But luckily, front axle lift, $3,040. The wheels are the stock alloy 20-inch rims. There is a $15,000 magnesium version of these rims that saves 20 pounds for people that hate money. And the brakes are the huge 408 millimeter steels. Yes, people that actually track their GT cars prefer steel brakes. Oh, and one more thing about the wheels. This car has winter tires mounted because this is a winter daily driver. Impressive. On the inside, there is, you guessed it, <laughs> exposed carbon fiber and race tech, which I'm pleased to see this crap was optioned out on this car for this steering wheel and gear stick. Speaking of the gear stick, let's all hope that the 992.2 PDK 911s get this sexy stick instead of that stupid razor. Of course it comes with stock bucket seats, very supportive, and door straps. Otherwise they've done their best to dress up the interior and hide the fact that it is now a 12 year old design. But really what makes the GT4 RS so outstanding is that it is everything that Porsche have tried for so long to avoid with the Cayman. When the 987 Cayman was introduced in 2005, Porsche would not even allow a limited slip diff to be optioned for fear it might compete with the 911. In 2012, the 981 or third generation was introduced with a continuing reluctance to encroach too near to 911 power on most models until the release of course of the Spyder and the GT4. Finally, in 2016, the 982 or 718, which was claimed to be the fourth generation, but was really just a facelift re-engined 918, arrived and Porsche started to remove any restrictions from the Boxster Caymans. However, by this time sales had slumped, not because it was a bad model, but because this thing had arrived with its Golf four-cylinder engine, giving first-time Porsche owners a slightly lower cost alternative to access that magic Porsche key to match their cringy Porsche merchandise. So really it is only fitting that the last of the ice powered Caymans is a finely balanced mid-engined GT3 powered rocket sled that will leave you bleeding from the ears and in shock from sensory overload. I give it a goddamn impressive rating. Anyway, I wanted to thank my friend Stephen for letting me use his beautifully configured GT4 RS. And of course, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye then.